What if the seller of your next house was your lender and you got to negotiate the terms and the interest rate? Believe it or not, this popular trend of the 80s called seller carried financing is slowly gaining some traction and making its way back. So stay tuned. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We are the Hatch Homes Group, and it's our Monday market update. Um, Before we get into the seller carry contract, um, let's remember to please like and subscribe if you are enjoying what you're seeing. Okay, so last month, I don't know if you guys remember that we did the top five trends that we're seeing in the Portland market right now. One of those trends was seller carried financing, something that we hadn't seen really much. And all of a sudden there's, you know, listings that are starting to market that. So seller carried financing is when the seller is your lender and you have a contract to purchase it. We've had a lot of questions about this. So we're going to break it down just really briefly. It's there's, there's a lot of complexities. So this is just the basic version of it, you guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's amazing. If uh, a buyer had come to uh, a realtor last year at this time and said, I want to buy a home with seller financing, um, they would have been laughed at. There's, uh, there's the, the, the response would have been, well, you've got to pay over list, you've got to waive your inspection petition, you've got to waive your appraisal, and then you might be lucky. Um, so things are really different now. And um, this is an important topic to look at. And a little bit of perspective, like John was saying, in the last 10 years, it definitely wasn't really a thing. But in the 80s, and especially the late 80s, when the interest rates were so high, like in the 18, 18%, if you didn't know how to do seller carried financing, you weren't selling houses. Yeah, that's a bit mind blowing. So Angela, um, when would it make sense to use this kind of seller financing? So when would it would make sense? So like, you know, there's a lot of things to look at for how it could maybe benefit a seller or a buyer, but just really like some basics is um, say the seller has an investment property and they don't really need the like big cash out. Like they want to cash out, they want to get rid of the investment property, but like that big lump of change they're going to get, they're either going to pay really high capital gains taxes on, or they're going to reinvest it into something else that might not have as good of a return on investment. So that could be a good option saying that perhaps instead of getting like, oh, take the money out, sell it, take the money out, get 3% return. You might be able to do the math. You might be able to make the terms work. So you could get anywhere from like eight to 11% return on that. So investment property, that kind of things, if you're retired, things like that. Um, also, if a property is not financeable, so say, say um, you have a great property, you have a buyer that really wants to buy it, um, but the house will not finance conventionally, then you could potentially work out a good deal for the seller and buyer where the seller would be, you know, be finance, you know, be your, be your lender while you get the property up to snuff. And, um, hey, cat. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just will not take no for an answer. Um, okay. So the, so the property isn't financeable and the seller is open to a contract the buyer can purchase it on a contract, get the house, like fix it up, do what they need to do to get it financeable. Once it's financeable, they can get conventional financing. Then you close out the contract. So you can get a potentially really cool property that you couldn't get otherwise because of this creative kind of solution. Yeah. What about for buyers? Is there anything creative they can do with their down payment if they don't have cash on hand for that? So, you know, I, I hear, you know, back in the like great recession when a lot of people lost some cash, um, but they had assets. Um, for instance, say you're a buyer and you have a yacht and you don't want the yacht, but you want this property and the seller of the property wants the yacht. <laughs> and like with contract sales, you can get creative, right? So like, here's my down payment. It's a yacht, you know, like that. those are the kinds of things that you can actually work out. Or a car. Or a car. Yeah. Or a p- another plot of land, right? You own land in a certain area. You want to, you, you know, you'll sign over the deed for your down payment, you know, like things like that, which is really interesting. So John, 
you yeah. recently contemplated this. You were. I did. Yeah, I so did. Tell us about that scenario. Yeah, well, we have a, a duplex on the east side that um, we've had for a long time, and um, we um, we were contemplating selling it. We are selling it, and um, we've decided to do a ten thirty one exchange and buy a, 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 a better property. But um, there's a lot of people like me that are mature in age <laughs> and um, maybe thinking, I don't want to deal with tenants anymore. I don't want to deal. I just want to um, play golf, have less stuff in my life and um, get a monthly check. So it's a, a pretty appealing um, to be able to um, have a payment for that property uh, staged over a period. So the capital gain is diminished because yeah. um, uh, it can be a significant um, loss if you, if, you, if you don't do a 1031 exchange, a Delaware Trust, or you um, actually stage out the payments. And John, if you were to, you know, I don't know, say in a few years, retire and then uh, be in a different maybe tax bracket, then your capital gains would be exactly. yeah. less, right? That's right. And you've always got the security with an investment. If, if a buyer messes the property up, stops paying, you've always got the security you can take the property back. So it's pretty secure to, to, to do that. And there, there's um, quite a few people that will appeal to. Mm. The bottom line is real estate is not so black and white. But this kind of deal is not so black and white either. There are some risks involved. Um, often attorneys are, can get involved um, and it's not for everyone. But if you're trying to figure out a way to do something, there's always ways to be creative. And this is just one way to be creative. So if you're looking for that, reach out to us and we like and subscribe, share this and reach out and we'll have that kind of conversation. Yeah. Have a good week, everyone. See you next week. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we want bloopers. <laughs> Good blooper. The cat, her, the cat hair, we were looking for bloopers. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um,